out here. We wait till it's super hot and we um, just can't even talk, it's so hot. We're building a 32 panel by facial ground mount about 300 feet from the home. This is, uh, so we're using some Canadian solars again. The ground was super hot, hard and hot, and but we were able to drive the post. It took a little longer than usual. And now we're trenching. Got Tony in there doing a the ditch. But we're uh, doing a couple things. For this uh, inspection, we want to put some sight pipes in. So we're gonna backfill this. We wanna backfill this anyway. It makes our life easier. All right, Tony let me put in this micro air. He didn't jump in and do it in three seconds. So I followed the diagram that we've been using. Mounted the micro air to the three ton condensing unit. Hooked up the four wires. Two of them get hooked to the um, capacitor. Then one gets spliced in on the on the compressor wire and then the black wire gets put on the con compressor contactor. So again, one goes to Herm, one goes to Common on the capacitor, then a splice of the brown wire from the microwave into the red wire going to the compressor, and then the remaining black wire gets put on the contactor for the spade terminals. We're just uh, checking for inrush, and uh, this unit says 75 locking rotor amps. We want to see how much we've reduced it by. So we set our fluke meter on min-max, it captures the fan at roughly, as you see, 4.2 amps. And now we're going to see what the uh, inrush is. The um, run, running amps are for this unit are 14 and we are running about 9.3. So it even run, it lowered the run amps on this. So, all right, love these things. Here we go. Oh, I hate when that happens. 19.5 from 75. Woo, yeah, baby. Oh, I've been suffering from heat exhaustion, so I haven't taken much video. Anyway, we're uh, got our array up. We finally got some clouds. Yeehaw. And we're bringing a pipe in here. We have spent most of the day trying to find utilities and not tear them up. But Tony's finishing up our trench to the house. And the customer wants a sub-feed to power this building, and in addition, he's gonna build on here. So, we've got, um, oh, so much more to do. I just put a micro air on that Lennox 3-ton, works beautifully. That's working good there. And then, uh, oh, I gotta help Daniel with a pipe. Hold on, Daniel. So, we gotta, this is nice and shallow. We gotta dig that deeper, put a new panel in there. Hoo way. And there's all sorts of noise going on in here too. Putting a 15K up where Wes is, 12 inch wiring trough. We are gonna put a bypass in with this one. So we got 200 amp bypass. We're gonna bring the solar in here. We're gonna bring grid in here. We're gonna go up through the attic and over to the main panel off the center lugs in here. So it'll be grid. Solar, yeah. Got the pipes. This thing is pre-piped. Triple six, double barrel, ready to go. And, uh, oh, I gotta go back to digging. It's my favorite thing. Little in-process video here. We've got, there's always add-ons when we show up. So the customer asks us to run a sub-feed to his shop over here and to run some extra ethernet. So we set up a separate conduit for his ethernet. We're gonna run, um, we're gonna put an 80 amp breaker in this panel and subfeed that garage. So when we do this, this is an outdoor rated gutter. We have to, especially when there's brick, it's a little more challenging to mount these outdoor gutters. And so what we end up doing is putting the gutter up first with our getting all our pipes level and put our TAs on and level it up and then go into the crawl space and try to figure out the best place to come through the gutter and at what height to come through. So we, we get a height and elevation mark and then we make sure that where we're poking through that we're not on a floor joist and or some, you know, we gotta get through the band. So we're going through brick, we're going through block, we're going through wood and uh, you don't wanna hit one of their floor joists. So you just gotta 
measure twice and drill once. And then once we mark everything, we end up taking the gutter back off because if you start mounting all this stuff, like we have a fusible disconnect here, you can't do this because you need clearance for the pipe, you need clearance for the TAs, you need clearance. This is an EMT. Again, this is, so this is the solar. Our solar is going to come from our ground mount 300 feet away. And then once you're inside the house, it's high voltage DC. So we transition to EMT and take that all the way over to the garage where the 15K inverter is. And that's got to be in metal, in some sort of metal clad or in a, a metal pipe for high voltage DC inside the home. And then, so again, back to you mark everything, take the gutter back off, and then uh, we use, these have been awesome. These are just high speed uh, brick saws or core bits that we can have one for two inch fittings to give you clearance for the fitting, like an LB or a TA. And then I have one for one inch. And I've been just trying this, uh, well not the whole hog, I bought a grinder. And I bought this um, high speed Milwaukee grinder. Boy, it eats the batteries, but it does really well. So it's been fun. And this is our a one inch, for one inch fittings. That works really well. There's a pilot bit. And then once the once you get um, into, once, once you're into about a half inch depth, uh, you can take the pilot bit out because now you've got a, uh, a captive core bit as you set it up against the brick. So we've been running those 12 amp hour Milwaukee's. They do really well, but it will eat some batteries up going through brick veneer, then block, and then some of the blocks are solid and you know, the fun or poured wall. And there's extensions too. So we can go through 12 inch block, 12 inch walls, plus a brick veneer. But that has changed, that's a, that's a great, a great Milwaukee tool. And then once those holes are drilled, we make fittings. Again, we have our pipes in here so we can bridge the brick and all the cinder blocks and get inside and run our SER cable, service entrance rated, this SER cable. This is, this is actually two aught, two, huh, no, silly. This is the four aught SER. It said two out right there. You see that? You see that? It messed me up, but it's actually four out. What's going on here? Um, anyway, we're going to transition from uh, the four out. We're going to get that up into this disconnect. And then we're going to take out um, the feed. This is all inside the wall, so we're going to actually pull. Anyway, we're going to make a loop and come down through this pipe. So we got a penetration there through the attic. We'll come down, hit our fusible disconnect, and then off we go to the inverter in the crawl space. Anyway, just a little in process. Uh, don't forget your Myers hubs. Um, we use these. I was using Tapcons, but man, these these hammer-in concrete anchors are so much nicer, and they seem to hold better. So we like them. And then we're using uh, it's four. Three, it's three four ounce and one two ounce. Oh, it's a two out ground. Mm -hmm. That's where I was dumb. Dumb. And then to, this is kind of handy too, just taking a piece of heavy rebar and got a hole drilled in it so it can fit over those fit over those nail in so you're not smashing the gutter or smashing your hand as much. <laughs> Alright, well, enough of that. I gotta get in the gotta get in the crawl space and run our EMT run one inch EMT over to the 15K inverter and then we're going to pull our solar in and probably call it a day. But uh, making good progress. It's probably a four day job and we'll have it done. And that's 15K with 13K of solar and 20K of battery and uh, it's just a lot of, uh, we knew we were going to have a lot of time in the attic and the crawl space on this one. That's just the way it goes sometimes. So a lot of add-ons in this job. Sometimes you get to a place and the customer is like, please, could you do this? Can you do that? So we've added a, added a panel, we added a trench, and we're sub-feeding that. And uh, the solar is done, 300 feet away. Everything's landed there. And the solar's landed on the inverter. Microwear is doing great on the condensing unit. And we still have to add a generator inlet for his portable generator, add the fuses, clean this fusible disconnect up, and then we're going to shut, pull a meter tomorrow, shut this place down for about two hours, and land all our 4-aught SER 
table and then clean up this gutter put ground bar in here and all that fix the spectrum internet and then I get to rake out all this mess I made of this yard so end of day three we're doing pretty well added another conduit for ethernet oh I got to clean up that brick so calling for inspection there's a a lot some jobs even though it's the same equipment some jobs take a little bit longer it's just harder to access certain things and this is one of those uh, but still good no uh, no hurdles yet that we haven't been able to get over with I do have to deal with a panel I got a panel blemish weird Canadian solar blem in the middle of the pallet got this real cloudy the panel works fine but it's just doesn't look good so got to deal with that so there's always something always something to wrestle with all right day four we should have this thing up and running tomorrow and day four and we'll be in uh, good shape and call for inspection all right i'm going to close up these cabinets but i thought i'd give you a, a little tour of the insides again the beauty of the 15k inverter sorry for the glare it's got this protective cover on this user wire area there's four out aluminum coming in here on the right there's four out going out to the loads so what we do is interrupt the power from between the meter and the house panel and bring that in to this power distribution block okay so we go from the meter base to a 200 amp fusible disconnect to this power distribution block and then we distribute we go to the inverter on the right and then we come up and we land on the lugs in the GE transfer switch sometimes we double lug this the, the power distribution block just just such a nice neater job still works the same and then this box is so neat that you don't have to cram a bunch of wires and double lug and it's just a lot easier to build it with the power distribution blocks more expensive but it just does a nicer job all right so the grid side again this is bi-directional he's tied to do power so it will sell on this back through the power distribution block back through to the meter all right so the, that's the grid side then the load side is simply coming out of the load breaker and coming to the load so we come to the high side of this transfer switch yes this inverter has a bypass this is just a backup in case there ever is an issue with any of the solar he can just take the handle and go back to grid so and in most in the um, everyday operation we're going to be on the 15k it will have 200 amp pass-through capability but if the power goes off the house doesn't there won't it doesn't there won't be any light flicker there will be no nothing so this is a lot in a way on a 200 amp service this is a lot simpler than the 12k and a lot more robust and a lot more capable now we get into stacking inverters that's we get in, can argue where the two 12ks will outperform a single 15 but you can keep stacking and scaling both so this makes a very nice neat bypass using a power distribution block our solar is landed in here and we've got just 13 kilowatts a little 13.4 kilowatts it'll take up to 17 so i have a whole mppt channel that's not being used in case we need to add more we got more battery capability just have 20 kilowatts right now if he ever wanted to we could easily add almost double that put 40 kilowatts in this space and uh so that's it. I'm going to fire this thing up. I just wanted to show you the inside. So again, it's, it's grid, it's load. There's a ground bar and there's a neutral bar underneath. And then there's your solar and any controls. We're really not using a generator control because he has a portable generator we're going to bring in here. We still haven't done that. We got to bring that into, um, we got to wire in a gen plug. That's one thing we got to do. But I want to get these batteries charging, turn them on. So I want to get some solar going here. So we're going to fire up this inverter and uh, just at least get batteries charging. So I'm going to turn it on. Master on off is on the side here. Close up some stuff. Put this gutter back together. So I'm going to let the inverter come on. You'll see that it is off. Lots of glare. Lots of glare. There we go. So I'm going to let the inverter come back on. Now that we have our grounds and neutrals bonded, somewhere it will detect and give you a GFDI, ground fault detection fault 
If it doesn't detect there's a ground and neutral bonded somewhere in the system. We have just bonded that in our fusible disconnect. And so we should not be getting that alarm. Okay. It takes a few minutes for it to go through its relays and tests. And then um, we'll uh, be able to... I'm going to go ahead and turn on the solar right now. PV disconnects on the side. Just rotate the knob. And you'll see a green light should pop up here. There it goes. Green LED comes on. And it's still waking up. What we want is a normal light. We don't have AC out yet. And uh, we still, we should be able to, once it goes through its setup, battery breakers are on. I'm leaving the load off. Just want to get these batteries charging before we start doing some testing. I like testing AC, the air conditioning. So that's kind of it. And you can see the inside and just a quick startup. So the inverter is on. It's going to go through a few checks you'll hear a noise here in a little bit little relay action and it will come on and solar will start flowing to the batteries because the batteries are sitting at 50 where did i get to 59 percent we're at 59 percent so master light is on it always takes longer when you're videoing when you're looking at these things da -da -da. there we go there's a relay click in all right, what's happening? We're getting a four kilowatts of solar coming in. It's gonna ramp up, oh, 08.49. Look at that, 10,000 watts going into the battery. The light should be flashing, and they are, the LED's flashing on screen. That means it's charging. So I've already set the battery settings, bring in roughly 10 kilowatts. We'll get that battery charged up in no time. All right, that's the, a wrap on this job. This is uh, going really well except for the crawl space, which I managed to stay out of for the most part. So thank you, Willis and Wes, for that. All right, let's, uh, let's get out of here. If you got any questions or need any help or like a system, I'd be glad to walk you through the whole process. Engineer 775, signing out.